Hi, this is Judy Sandrock, and in this video, we are going to cover the SDG STEM Starter Kits Getting Started Guide. SDG is an acronym for the Sustainable Development Goals. With this kit, we can run projects that relate to goal number three, good health and well being, as well as goal number seven, affordable clean energy. And for those of you who have the soil moisture sensor, number 15, life on land. So let's get to it. Your kit will contain at least six components. And to build an instrument, we need four components, four elements. We need an input, output, processor, and power. So as the input, our kit has sensors that provide data as an input. We have the light sensor, which gives us the visible light intensity, which is measured in lux, and UV or ultraviolet index a weather sensor which gives us air temperature in degree centigrade and air relative humidity as a percentage and then the soil moisture sensor which will give us soil moisture also as a percentage and the output output our kit has three forms of output the oled screen to read data from the sensors wi-fi communication from the core processor and you'll see how to connect that to Wi-Fi and internet, and USB serial communication using the USB interface. Now we can have a look at that processor as our third element. The processor chip has an ESP32 chip with four megabit of processing memory, Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth capability. It has been loaded with Arduino code already at the factory so that it'll work directly out of the box for you. It can be overwritten with code that you develop yourself, in Arduino, MicroPython, Java, and C, C++. Here we can see the back and the front of that chip so that you can see that ESP32 component. Power, which is our fourth element that we need. Power is provided by the USB interface. This component is, doesn't only provide power, but it is also used for USB programming as the interface that you're going to use to load your code once you've developed it yourself can also be used to serially connect the kits to your computer if you prefer to transfer data directly to a spreadsheet without using an internet connection. Now let's get to building your kit. Open all of the bags. What I do is that I cut the bag right at the top so that I can reuse the bag because sometimes I like to put the components back in the bags when I'm not using them. Take the connectors out of the Ziploc bag and let's actually start with this light sensor you'll see that there is a tab between the second and third pin on the connector itself. And match up this with the notch, this notch with the slit in the connector port on the chip. Now connect all of your chips together. So you can see where it's connected correctly because you've got a check mark. So you connected the weather sensor to the, to the core processor. Um, and then underneath, we've tried to connect um, the light sensor to your core, but the thing is the light sensor was the wrong way around. You need to be able to see these two little icons, they need to be in the bottom right hand corner and they need to be facing you. Uh, in this case, which is incorrect, we cannot actually see the icon on the chip. So therefore it's the wrong way around. So now you're ready to connect all of your chips. And um, also the thing is that what you need to remember is that to build an instrument, we need the four elements, input, output, processor, and power. What I usually do is that I actually connect them in rows and then I add the connectors and then I connect those rows together. Um, otherwise it can get pretty difficult. And now, we, now we're ready to run experiments. Here's some additional considerations. In this case, I have the Quest for Excellence branded chip. And what I've done is that I've actually inserted that in my bottom row on my kit so that I now have six chips connected together. And what this does is that it gives me um, additional mechanical strength as well as redundancy. So this chip itself doesn't have a sensor on it. However, it does connect power and data communication. So the thing is placing it in the circuit allows for additional mechanical strength and connection redundancy. You can see here that if any of these connectors was missing, there would still be another route for the power and the communication. Now what we can do is we can also add the soil moisture sensor. And when I do that, what I can do is I can actually move 
I've moved this um, USB uh, connector and I moved it by, and I've tilted it by, six, by 90 degrees. So what I can do is that I can actually connect from the side because you can see here on the right hand side when we actually put the sensor uh, kit into the, into the soil, we won't have space for our USB connection and our, our power bank, but you can actually connect it here by tilting it by 90 degrees. So what we can do is we can measure our environment by reading off the OLED screen. So when you power up the kit um, using the USB power, you can read the data directly off the screen. So you can see here our, our weather sensor is working. Um, it's uh, giving us a temperature. And uh, at the time I took this photograph, it was actually raining outside. So we've got 100% relative humidity. Um, so that was quite an interesting case to note over here. And um, leave the kit to run for about a minute so that all the sensors can actually acclimatize. If you want to progress to the next screen, what you do is you click on this button, which looks like an advance. You know, it's got a little arrow pointing to the right. And if you want it to automatically scroll through all the screens, you're looking for this check mark um, that you just lightly, lightly click on that, um, press on that check mark, and then it'll scroll through all of the screens automatically and see how that works for you um, before you connect it to the Wi-Fi. Now we're getting ready to connect the kit to Wi-Fi and to the internet. So scroll manually to the screen that shows you SDG Wi-Fi hub name. And in this particular photograph, you can see the SDG hub name is 7617924. And using a smartphone, I always prefer to use a smartphone rather than a laptop to connect my kit to the Wi-Fi. So I use my smartphone and you can see I took a screenshot. Um, at the time, it was on my home Wi-Fi, which was fine. But you can see here that the SDG with that same number, 7617924, was available. Um, so what I did is that I, I clicked on that and uh, to actually join. And then I needed to put in my password. And in this case, the password was, in this example, 8313817. So you can see there's that little key there for the, the password added that in there and then when I clicked on join, that's what it did and I took another screenshot and you can see that it's joining that network. Now what happens is now automatically this configuration screen comes up and you can see here it says Wi-Fi manager and we're gonna start off with configuring the Wi-Fi. So this is where we actually take our kit and using the same Wi-Fi hub, we're now gonna connect it to a very simple Wi-Fi connection which has a name and a password. In this case, it's gonna be the guest Wi-Fi where I am at the time. And so what I've found out is I found out that I can, I can join the guest network and I've been given the password. So what you do is you select, first you select configure Wi-Fi. Then what you do is you enter your preferred um, Wi-Fi name or otherwise known as an SSID. Um, and in this case, it was guest, and then over here, the password, I put the password in, which here was A, B, C, D, E. Now, it's very, very important, this note here at the bottom. It is imperative that the connection you plan to use is a standard Wi-Fi access with a standard WPA personal security, okay? So what it needs to have is it needs to have a name and a password, just simple, only those two elements. And you can see here, I've put in a Wikipedia page, so you can go to that and you can read more about that. WPA Enterprise or Wi-Fi protected setup is not supported. So if your institution does not have a standard Wi-Fi, you may need to use a personal hotspot on your smartphone or require a standard Wi-Fi hub with a data SIM card. The next setup we're going to do is we're now going to configure our kit with a name. So what, what it asks for, it asks for a group name as well as a unit name. Usually these kits um, are part of like a program or a project. Um, and so the thing is that what I'm doing is I'm configuring this particular kit for my Quest for Excellent project. So I've put Q4E in there as my group name. And then I've given it a very unique name 
uh, which is Julie, Jan 2022, so that I can see it later when I connect to the dashboard and click save. And now your kit will be connected to the Wi-Fi you've selected and it'll post your data to a secure dashboard. And now we're ready to start using the dashboard. So thank you very much for watching this video. And what you'll find is also on the channel is another video which will take you through how to use the data dashboard. So thank you very much once again and cheers for now.